All right, so we are going to talk about migrations and databases, and I'm going to close everything here and keep things clean. We want to explore our databases. So if you are on Windows, you can use PHP My Admin, and that will take you to your database interface. If you are on Mac, you can use your terminal like me, or you can use that table plus program. Let's just get into MySQL using MySQL dash U root. I'm going to list my databases. So we have my app right here. That's what we called our database. So we want to say use my app. So database has changed. Now let's say show tables. And we have these tables created for us when we created our app and we ran our migrations. So again, migrations is just basically creating the tables in our database. Let's create a new tab here and run PHP Artisan one more time. If we go up all the way under available commands, we have this migrate command that will run the database migrations. So that's one command, keep in mind. And if we go down a bit more, we have the DB section, which will perform different actions on our database, like dropping all the tables or showing information and so on. And then we also have a migrate section. A migrate section is also in charge of performing certain tasks on our database, like dropping all the tables and rerun all the migrations with this fresh command or rolling back the migrations and things like that. So let's just practice here and we want to actually break our application. So I'm going to use that db wipe command and see what happens. So db colon wipe will drop all the tables and we would have an empty database. So let's run this. You can see all the tables are dropped and back in our database, if we just show tables, again, we have zero. And if we try to re-render our site, we get this error, even though we don't have any functionality and we are not calling our database from our app. But this is another change that they've made in Laravel version 11. In the previous versions, we didn't have to actually run our migrations in order to just output some basic templates. But in this version, because it's looking for the sessions, we need to run our migrations and we need to have our database properly set up. So let's bring it back. So we can use the migrate command. And if we go back to MySQL, we have our tables back. Of course, our website is back to normal. Now let's take a look at this users table under MySQL. So in terminal, we can say desk and then users. You notice we have ID, name, email, and so on. So these properties are coming from this migration file. Under database in our project, we go to migrations, the first document, which is named create users table. You notice we have this up method within that. We have a create a static method from this schema that will create a users table with ID, name, email, and so on. These are exactly the properties that we see in our database. So this is giving us an idea how to create our own tables. So let's say I wanna change this name to username. I actually don't want name, I want username. Let's save it and go back to our database. This is not going to immediately be applied. We still have name here. We need to again run a fresh migration. So we can just use that migrate colon fresh that would drop all the tables and create new tables. Since we are working in a local environment, it doesn't really matter if we just delete everything, but you need to be careful if you are working on a real application, you don't want to keep running this command. We could actually use a rollback. So there is a rollback command that would just roll back the last migration. So it would not delete everything. It would just undo the last action. But anyway, if we go back to MySQL, and inspect our users table. Now we have a username. You also notice all of these properties or columns have a type and the key and the default and so on. These are all done using this blueprint pattern and we can read all about it in the documentation. But basically, if we want to have a title, for example, a string, we would just use that. If a column, for example, needs to be unique, like here, we can use the unique function. So if we go back to Laravel documentation for a moment, under database migrations, we have columns and and then available column types. So you can see we have a bunch of them and this is quite easy. We don't have to worry about a specific parts. And for example, instead of a string, we just say long text. That's all we have to do. So we changed the name to username here. Now let's open user model. So this is under our app folder models and then user model. So remember when we created our app, this user model and this user migration file was created for us. So this fillable array telling us these columns in our database needs to be filled from another source. And back in our migration file, we have username, email, and password. And all the other columns are either nullable or auto-generated. So we need to make sure 
that these properties here are in line with the properties in our migration file. We said username, so therefore we need to change this one to username as well. Now we know that in our registration form, we need a username, an email, and password. So we can start building our form. And later on, again, we will create our own models and our own migration files. We learned in practice how they work and what we can do with them.